our popular deck here being picked up by a lot of the grinders, and we're we're seeing once again some some interesting ways to attack it. Anthony Lowry leaving up four color gifts for this tournament. So this is the grind house. What Anthony's got going on here. I know I said the same thing about Shaheen's deck, but this is another kind of slow control deck. It's got a couple of different gifts on given packages. It can just gifts for value, get four solid cards, and there's some graveyard stuff like Raven's Crime. It can also gifts for exactly two cards. It's sort of a uh, less known mode of the card. You can gifts for just two, which puts two cards in your graveyard, which allows him to get Unburial rights alongside something like Grape Titan, Iona, or Ellis Norn as appropriate. If I'm not mistaken, Ellis Norn is a lock against Twin. Yeah, they don't. Uh, Brian has one copy of Harvest Pyre in his deck and one copy of Cryptic Command to get it off the field. Sure. But outside of that, he doesn't have a way to interact. The twin player cannot win with it in play. Right, Game they one. do have to get it off the table. Yeah. That we are underway. Both players just trading land drops here at the beginning. The gift deck is powerful, but tends to be very slow. It's one of the slower control decks of the format. Yeah. So. Because the twin deck puts so much pressure on you to have instant speed removal, it's worth looking at Anthony's list here, see how much he's got to interact with instant speed. He's got three copies of Pat to Exile, two copies of Remand, three copies of Abrupt Decay, and a Dismember alongside two Thought Seizes and two Inquisitions. So a reasonable package. There's a couple sweepers here, one copy of Wrath of God, one copy of Damnation. A lot of the reason you see these one ofs is so Anthony can gifts for four cards in certain spots and actually get what he's looking for. Spellskite was the turn two play for Brian. Anthony just with lands right now. For example, Anthony can give some given for Wrath of God, Damnation, Supreme Verdict, and X, and make sure he gets a four mana sweeper. Yeah. One weapon that Anthony actually gets to use in this matchup is the Raven's Crime package. So he said he doesn't really want to tap out. What he can do is incrementally Raven's Crime Brian's hand away, doing that without ever actually letting down mana for his removal. It is a, an option to have in this matchup, but as we saw round one in Ben Freeman versus Shaheen Sarani, Shaheen was trying to do that game plan with Liliana, and when it was not backed up by instant speed interaction, it doesn't right. take much for Twin to go off. Yeah, I mean, the danger with that is that it takes a lot of... It's not the first Raven's Crime that'll win. You have to get about four of them off before it starts really dealing damage. And here, though, we see Brian going for an aggressive play. The turn two spells guy is now going to get backed up. We're on an end step. Deceiver Exarch. Brian hoping, it looks like, to just combo here with Spell Sky Protection. And Anthony will go ahead and remand the, the Deceiver Exarch. So that'll keep him alive for at least one turn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, apologies for the confusion. Online pairings are not. And we now go to Brian's fourth turn. Anthony just with one mana up. We're also putting up paper pairings. And we will go ahead and see where he goes with this. His drop of the turn was Electrolyze. Looks like he doesn't have the fourth land, but he does have two more copies of Deceiver Exarch. So he's going to go ahead and throw out another Deceiver Exarch on his own turn here and untap an island. Yeah, and at this point, I think he's saying, well, I believe Anthony has the ability to counter things out of my deck. I think. With a spell sky in play, he's going to be hard pressed to remove it. So this is a way of playing around counter spells. That Serum Visions did find the fourth land for Brian, and it drew him a copy of Splinter Twin. Keep in mind, he's been able to not crack that fetch land, crack that fetch land thanks to Anthony's Urborg. So he does have double red and Splinter Twin on his turn, but Anthony with the fourth land is just going to pass. And with a spell sky in play. Brian does have the option to go for the kill here if he chooses to. And with Spell Sky in play, it's a it's pretty low cost to go for it. You know, if you're sitting in Brian's seat, you're probably thinking worst case scenario is he has another counter spell, which is not the end of the world. Uh, you don't like making those kind of trades, but uh, you had to kind of get him out of the way at some point. Yeah, that's just a one for one. So if it's a counter spell, it doesn't seem like it'd be that bad. Brian, though, gonna go ahead and just play a tempo game. He plays his fourth land and swings for one, passes the turn, and now Anthony will go for Gifts Ungiven on end step. And this might be one of those unfair gifts you're talking about where he just gets two cards. Well, he's already got the Unburial Rights in hand, unfortunately. So this might be one of those go get 
three sweepers plus a piece of spot removal kind of piles. I think he might go for it if the unburial rights wasn't already in his hand. Maybe he goes and gets the two-card package, but he doesn't have that option right now. Looks like he's going for some combination of discard and sweepers. Yeah. And I think he also has the loam in his hand, too, so it wouldn't surprise me to go for Raven's Crime here sure. and try to go for that package you mentioned before. He already has an Urborg, so he has access to a lot of black mana. He can really start going. Yeah, actually, look like he's just trying to grab a lot of discard here. Che I like this. I like the cards he's, he's shoveling to the front here. We've seen Path to Exile, Thoughtseize, Raven's Crime, Remand. Just a lot of cheap interaction. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of getting the spot removal here because he needs to pair it. He needs two pieces of spot removal before it matters because spell side is going to eat one. So the more that he can get counter spells and discard spells, the more I'm interested. The following feature matches are staying. Table two, Duke versus Young and Elspeth. Let's see what he goes with here. Table Looks like it's going to be a full four card thought. Four, four card gifts I'm given, though. Table Anthony has to pick four different cards. Two will go to his hand, two will go to his yard. Brian will choose which one's which. So his thought sees remand, path to exile, and deciding on the fourth. Looks like he may not be getting the Raven's Prime. I did expect him to get it here. Yep. See, the, the problem with this pile is he wants to get a second piece of removal. But Anthony can just split it, excuse me, Brian can split it by giving you one piece of discard slash counter spells and then one piece of removal, which is not really that efficient. Anthony, it looks like he's going to choose just three cards. Thought sees remand and path to exile. So... No, it's, I think it's he's still... Four, yeah, he just, he just was shuffling in the meantime. We'll see here. We'll, get, we'll see as soon as the spell resolves here. Yeah. I th the numbers, you generally just get two or four, so I'm assuming there's a fourth one coming out. Yeah, three's, a, three's an odd one, but if Anthony's shuffling like this... Yeah, it looks like he's only presenting three. Yep. So Brian will give Anthony the thought season hand, remand and path to exile, hit the graveyard. Okay. Not sure what to make of that, but I'm sure we'll find out in a moment. Overall, that doesn't feel too bad for Brian. Anthony does draw Damnation for the turn, but we're going to lead out on the Thought CC Gifts for. You see Brian's hand flush with cards here. He does want to respond. We'll go ahead and see it. Two copies of Splinter Twin, a copy of Deceiver Exarch, a copy, it looks like, of Remand, and then Electrolyze. Make up his hand. A lot of redundancy here, and Brian's going to have an opportunity to tap Anthony even lower at the end of Anthony's turn here to go for the kill if he wants to. And Anthony just will go ahead and concede to that thought cease, knowing, knowing that he doesn't have an interaction there. I mean, that felt a little preemptive to me. Yeah, I mean, you at least make Brian go for it. Yeah, you are playing abrupt decay colors. Okay. It's Anthony so was cold to that hand, but Brian didn't know that yet. Guys. Right. At least make him go through the motions. Doesn't cost you very much. With that said, Brian goes ahead and gets the first game. We'll go ahead and move over to the sideboard. Brian now knowing more or less what he's up against. A gifts on given deck. Usually that card, that deck is paired with life from the loam. So looking at a sideboard, one of the first cards I'm looking at here, he has, does have two copies of Blood Moon in his sideboard. Uh, nearly no basic, just one of each basic in Anthony's deck, so he does have trouble playing around a card like Blood Moon. Uh, other than that, he has things like Negate and Relic of Progenitus. Yeah, just some good generic disruption there. Uh, Relic seems excellent. Negate seems fine here, and the Blood Moons are probably lights out. On Anthony's side of the table, a Night of Souls Betrayal, three timely reinforcements, a Pulse of the Fields, two Sony Silence, a Celestial Purge, a Thought Seize, a Terracidon, a Slaughter Pact, two Spell Skites, a Stay in the Mind, a Jace Architect of Thought. Like the Spell Skites in this matchup, I think the Slaughter Pact's really solid. I think the additional Thought Seize is fine. I think Celestial Purge is okay. Uh, it's on the fence, depending on what other tools he wants to get out of his deck. And Knight of Souls Betrayal is fine in this matchup, too. Really makes the Splinter Twin kill problematic from Brian's side of the table. Deceiver Exarch has no power, and Pester Mike can't be put into play. 
Yeah, so it gets rid of both of those. Yep. Yeah. This is this our first modern Star City Games Open. If you're wa watching here and thinking, when do you get a chance to play modern on the Star City Open series? Now that we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and look at some of our upcoming events, one near you. We are currently in the end of season one, as you see here. Next week, we'll be in Miami for the Grand Prix as we make our way toward the first Invitational in Richmond that comes up at the end of March. We have a stop in Dallas along the way. Uh, after that, though, we do have season two, and we should be more modern then. Yeah, and we're going to have it as an Invitational format throughout the year, a Grand Prix as well, so a lot of modern here. Uh, throughout the beginning of season two, which is a short season, it's going to be standard in Syracuse, Providence, Cleveland, and then Seattle at the beginning of May. Then Dallas, a Legacy Open Series in Worcester, and then a modern and standard Invitational with a modern two-day Open Series, just like we have here in Baltimore at the Season 2 Invitational, June 5th through 7th, tied to the Origins Game Fair. Me, you, Cedric Phillips will be in the booth for that one. Yeah, it's the first time we're going to get to see modern as our invitation, one of our Invitational formats, so we'll really get to see a lot of the top players playing that format. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. And uh, again, the response here in Baltimore, 762, I believe, our official head count here. Just a great response. You mentioned, so cards like Stain the Mind, Knight of Souls Betrayal, all options out of Anthony's sideboard. Um, and that's one of the things with these four-color gift decks is they really can have a lot of different sideboarding options. Well, I, you know, the world is his oyster. He has <laughs> a right. bunch of different colors in this deck. On top of that, uh, he has his graveyard as a resource. He has gifts on given, so there's all sorts of different packages, uh, full combos or sort of ancillary side packages that he can set up. Things like the one Wrath of God, the one Damnation, the one Supreme Verdict, allowing him to get a sweeper with gifts on given at any point. Uh, the deck really affords a lot of opportunities to build like that. The cost, of course, is that he has a lot of weird one-ofs that he's going to draw that aren't necessarily going to do anything. For example, one copy of Life from the Loam. Great to gifts for when you have time and a Raven's Crime and all that stuff. How good is it to draw a random copy of Life from the Loam when you don't have that going? Not so good. One copy of Ghost Quarter. Nice option to have. But in that game, for example, it prevented Anthony from being able to gifts for Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, and Damnation because he would not have had the colored mana required to cast the Supreme Verdict, and Brian could have just given them that. So. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his deck, there are more than 40 different cards in the deck. So such little redundancy does mean that he is at... Yeah, his draws can be wildly different. And decks like this really polarize the Magic community, too, because there's a class of players who says, look at this deck and get anything that I want at any time. And there's another class of players, myself among them, who looks at a deck like this and says, I don't want to draw up an owing hand of, you know, Life from the Loam, Unburial Rites, Remand, you know, and try to make a way to make all these pieces like work. Grave Titan and three lands that may be cast your spells. A Lingering Souls yeah. if I'm lucky, you know? And a Lingering Souls plus I need black and white mana, so it cuts both ways. You'll, you'll see both attitudes. Both players have been kept on seven. We are underway. Anthony, this time on the play, leads off on Polluted Delta. Look at the options in his starting hand. He has a lot of mana. He has Life from the Loam. Looks like Supreme Verdict and Path to Exile. Something that's nice for Anthony in this matchup is he really doesn't have to care that much about his life total. Now, some of the blue-red decks, the twin decks, are a little bit more tempo-oriented and they can go into Snapcaster Bolt plus Vendillion Click, but uh, along the spectrum of matchups, Anthony can be pretty liberal about his life total in this one. Right, you see here, it goes out and fetches and shocks on to cast a turn two life from the loam, getting back that copy of Polluted Delta. Sweet. Already getting some mileage out of the loam. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like he does have a Lingering Souls to build up to here. Brian, meanwhile, just has a second land, now has both of his colors, though. He'll pass back. Anthony will dredge life from the loam for the turn. Gets two lands in the graveyard, both basics. Now we got a stew cooking. Yeah. Well, the basics could matter. Remember, next turn, Brian could slam a Blood Moon if he had one. Oh, I, I think it's great for Anthony to get those basics out of the graveyard right now. Yeah, right, because Brian's only on two mana, this is still a safe turn, right? Yeah. And he can use the Polluted Delta here to go get... Uh, he already has the Island of the Swamp, so that's already covered. But uh, given his vulnerability to... I'll say he doesn't have the snow-covered swamp. He does not have the... Have... <laughs> oh, yeah, there is one in here. <laughs> uh. there's, there's the third basic he can search up. And he's going to go for low three targets. That will get remanded. And now we're back on Brian's turn. He'll, now we start entering the dangerous turns for Anthony. 
Brian will have three lands. Looks like he has two copies of Deceiver Exarch in hand. Well, it's dangerous now, not only because of the combo, but also Blood Moon. Anthony does have some play against Blood Moon. He has a couple basics here, but it's still going to be very hard for him to play through it for the entire game. His deck just needs a lot of dual lands to function, and it's a four-color deck, and red's not one of them. So all the mounts he has are the same as colorless mana. Yeah, and there aren't too many cards in this deck that even use colorless mana. Yeah. Colorless mana hard, hardly counts. Doesn't look like Brian has a Blood Moon. I believe his hand is all blue cards at the moment. He'll go ahead and upkeep on Anthony, tap the Temple Garden with Pestermite, hoping to keep Anthony once again off that life from the loam. Anthony will, in response, use the white mana to go ahead and path to exile the Pestermite. I was a little bit surprised to see Anthony path in that spot because he had Hallowed Found in hand and the Snapcaster made, so he could have actually... I, I guess he needs to cast it right there because he needs to have the three mana left over to set up that sequence down the line. I, I just don't like giving the twin player an extra land this early on in the game if you can, if right. you feel like you can win the fight the next turn over it. Later on, that land is pretty free, but right now, it, it's relevant. Yep. Anthony will go ahead and take an opening, though, to cast Lingering Souls, get a threat of his own on the table. Now that Brian's tapped out, Anthony's not living in fear of the combo just yet. And if this was Anthony's plan, I think the use of Path to Exile is fine here, because he does need to get a clock going at some point. So you know you're not dying this turn. You can actually start getting some pressure into play. And you still have Snapcaster, plus access to Path, and the ability to flash back the Lingering Souls all in one turn if you have land number five. So this is yeah. pretty good. And it looks like it's going to be pretty good against Brian's hand. We do see he has a fifth land. Does have actually a copy of Batter Skull in hand, so maybe I spoke a little soon. Other than that, Brian has a lot of his tap creatures. I think he has copies of both Pestermite and Deceiver Exarch in his hand, along with a Dispel. But that Batter Skull, this might be a pretty decent time for it. Yeah, I was curious if Brian was going to bring in the Batter Skull because it's just pretty low powered against Anthony's strategy. It's a good backup plan to have against a lot of removal, but Anthony can also overpower Batter Skull by reanimating something big. That said, given Anthony's hand, it's very good right now. Yeah, he may force Anthony into a supreme verdict to get rid of it. Anthony does have one in his hand, but that would mean Anthony would have to sweep away his own creatures that he just spent the last turn fighting over. I think the more likely plan here from Anthony is to just chump block for a little bit, try to draw something powerful, or hope that Brian commits more to the board so the Supreme Bird catches more stuff. The draw from Anthony was a copy of Ghost Quarter. Brian's deck playing five islands and a mountain, so it would take a lot of work on Anthony's side to Ghost Quarter Brian out of the game. He needs to set up the full loam block here. Not impossible, no, but it's, it's slow. Yeah, I mean, this... This deck is the kind of deck that wants to play a game of that speed. Yeah. There's only one mountain, though, so it's possible Anthony can take Brian off red mana using this Ghost Quarter. If he quarters a dual land, he could get Brian down to single red over the course of two turns. But I also don't know how big of a priority it is for, Br for Anthony to try to establish that kind of lock when Brian's got the win in play. You know, the sure. Batter Skull is capable of winning this game by itself. So uh, I, I guess if the game is played at a slow enough pace that Anthony can try to set up Lone plus Ghost Quarter while chump blocking the Batter Skull for a while, hope to eventually overpower Brian while wa locking him out of red mana. Wants well, is gonna go ahead and set up more chump blockers. He swings for two, flashes back Lingering Souls, now has four creatures in play. Both players at 14. So Mentioned, I'm not sure how important Brian's life total is right now, especially not with the Batter Skull being uncontested. Yeah, I mean, it, if Anthony is going to win this game, it's going to involve doing something extremely powerful, getting something like Elastorn or Iona into play, stripping apart Brian's entire hand. It's going to be that sort of thing. Swing was there. Chump was made with a Spirit Token. Brian went up to 18. No plays from Brian. And we are back over to Lowry's turn. Draw the turn with Sunken Ruins. And part of what makes this twin deck so dangerous and so powerful is it can play entirely at instant speed. And so Brian can just sit here with all of his mana up, protect the Batter Skull from any sort of removal spell. And if Anthony ever taps very, very low, it's possible Deceiver X Arc plus Splinter Twin just results in a kill. 
Well, at some point, Anthony's going to get his Loam engine going again, I would think. That'll help get him into these re into these Alish Norn packages you're talking about, into Raven's Crime. And it looks like he is starting on the Ghost Quarter plan. Plays Ghost Quarter, uses it on Steam Vents. So Brian with six basics. He has five islands and one mountain in his deck. Anthony's hand really doesn't afford him the opportunity to do anything else, and he still has the Snapcaster in hand. So he, that, with the Path to Exile in his graveyard, means he's protected on the surface from the combo. And because, again, he's got nothing else going on, th this is what his hand lets him do. Hopefully you can either strip Brian out of red entirely or force him to play to the board a little bit and get more value out of your Supreme Verdict. Yeah, the danger is that the counter war they're setting up for, the situation where Brian goes for a kill, it looks like, were that to happen soon, that Brian will win that counter war. Most likely, but, you know, Anthony's sitting here with a lot of mana up. You don't necessarily know what he could have. It's not, it's not risk-free to go for the kill. Right. Anthony may force Brian to go for it. If he goes enough at Brian's mana, you know, on the turn when Anthony actually represents a threat to take away Brian's second red source, Brian will probably, at that point, try to go for something. Yeah. But, yeah, until then, we may just see some trading back and forth. on end step to see where Exarch is going to go ahead and tap down Anthony's green source. And this is pretty telling here because Brian knows Anthony has Loam and Anthony elected not to cast it. So what Anthony's saying here is, I've got a lot to do with my mana. I have a lot of protection. And Brian still might be going for the kill in spite of that. And, uh, you know, Anthony's hand's a little cumbersome. It looks like he's only going to be able to do one thing. I was surprised to see Anthony go for the Ghost Quarter plan when if he wasn't going to loam that turn. I would think you'd want to loam first and, you, you know, start ghost courting him once you feel really solid in your own quantity of mana. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, slowly winning the game with the ghost quarter doesn't seem unrealistic. It's just, it's a late game thing. Yeah. Let's see here, in response to that tap, Anthony's going to go ahead and use his Snapcaster Mage to snap back that path to exile. Wanting to keep Brian's board free of twin creatures. Brian goes and fetches up Stomping Ground. Stomping Ground typically in these lists to facilitate Ancient Grudge out of the sideboard. Sometimes you see some other weird green cards, but That's mostly, exactly about, it. mostly about Ancient Grudge. Two copies of Grudge in Brian's sideboard, no green cards in the main. Nothing like Tarmogoy for anything of that sort. Mech over to Brian's turn. A lot of blue cards. I don't believe, once again, that he has a, a Splinter Twin. I mean, he still has his Batter Sculpt, which is doing a lot of work for him. Like, this game is being played so much at Brian's pace right now because he has a threatened play. Anthony's probably not going to be able to kill it. Uh, Anthony is signaling that his plan here is Loam plus Ghost Quarter in some way. You can see Brian's got a boatload of mana here. Yeah, and if that's Anthony's plan, you feel that Anthony's got to be Loaming more aggressively. You know, the way his deck finds action is with Life from the Loam. Yeah. So that Anthony hasn't tried for Loam yet is slowing him down. And Brian, I think, has identified that. You see upkeep, he's going to try to tap Anthony's green mana yet again. Brian not wanting Anthony to be able to start loaming. Yeah, you can see this is a consequence of having a mana base like this. Uh, Anthony with Supreme Verdict in hand, but without double white. Yeah, his draw for the turn was Unburial Rights, a card he certainly would have wa preferred to loam into. And he'll play Urborg for the turn and just have to pass. And his Supreme Verdict, Unburial Rights, life from the loam. Yeah, he's trying to put up a good face here that he has something to stop the combo. And even then, with a Dispel from Brian, the card he'd have to worry about where to go for the combo is Abrupt Decay. And really, not much else. Yeah, something like... If there's not even green mana up, you wouldn't have to worry about something like Crozan Grip. And you can probably guess that Crozan Grip's not there because it would have been used on the Batter Skull right. a number of turns ago. Brian continuing to swing in with this germ token. It's ch slowly chipping away Anthony's creatures. He still has two blockers left. Does take one damage up to Seaver Exarch though, Anthony at 13 currently. And still no reason for Brian to take any risks at this point. 
the game doesn't seem to be progressing in a way that's bad for Brian. As long as, as long as Brian can win a fight over Gifts Ungiven, which he can with this Dispel that he's just picked up, yeah. it, it's hard to imagine Anthony does anything too dangerous. Maybe he answers the board with a Sweeper, but you just go right back to the Batter Skull plan at that point. Yeah. I mean, so this turn will say Anthony will finally get to life from the Loam if he wants to, but even then, that's, that only starts to create card advantage, I would say, next, like, it only creates card selection next turn if Anthony decides to dredge it. Swing with Spirit Token puts Brian down to 22. But it's not going to be Loam from Lowry. It's going to be Supreme Verdict. Brian more or less OK with that. Yep. He'll get to rebuy the Germ Token. Spell Skite, the post-combat play from Lowry. And Anthony is willing to tap out here for something that prevents Brian from going for the kill next turn. Yeah, but, but what's the game? So. I don't, what's the end step, end plan here? So Brian just could bounce the batter skull and recast, right? Exactly. I, I think at this point, Anthony needs to basically draw and resolve gifts and, from the setup. And a really nice spot here for Brian. He does get an end step Vendillion click into play. And that's going to mean that he gets to get rid of life from the loam or in burial rights. I actually think he's not going to touch this hand. If I had to guess, I think he's going to just rebuy the batter skull, attack down to 10 present the two creatures again. Well, does he rebuy it or does he just move it onto the click? Sure, that's also fine. Yeah. Yep. He, yeah, he may not take either. Life from the Loam is good, but takes at this point, it takes far too long to get going. Yeah, I, he's got the kill sewn up in two turns if he just puts the Bear Skull onto the click. So, yeah, keep you're those, absolutely right. You'll leave those, him there. Keep those clunkers. This game's not going on long enough for those cards to get leverage, so. Whatever. Yeah, Pestermite in Brian's hand as well. Dispel. Looks like Snapcaster Mage. Let's see if he wants to do anything on end step. Looks like he may go for one more. This is going to be. It's going to be Pestermite. Just getting more aggression on the board. Skin to beater into play. And this is something that you mentioned that you see Twin doing. They have so much pressure from the twin combo that they actually never have to go for it. And then they just win with some attackers. Yep. See, Brian actually drawing the Splinter Twin that turn. Past the Spell Sky from Lowry should keep it in check. And here's a swing for five from Brian, putting Anthony down to eight. And no plays on Brian, just passes back. Looks like Slaughter packed the draw from Lowry. He'll cast Loam. And Brian should have that Slaughter Pact covered by Dispel. And or just backup beaters. I mean, it, it, this, is, yeah. this is also just fine. If Brian goes for the Equip next turn, that should be lethal. So finally late in the game, Lowry gets to resolve the gifts. But it, it's too slow. It's too late for that engine to do much of anything. So he replays the Ghost Quarter for the turn. At this point, I don't think Anthony, needs, should, Anthony should be preempting this Slaughter Pact. I think he needs to just hope that Brian spends his turn trying to put the equipment on something, and he gets a lot of time that way. And Anthony going for the Ghost Quarter again. This is Brian's last basic, but not likely going to matter much. Yep, I mean... Anthony needs to drag this game out for quite a few more turns before that starts mattering. And he is facing down lethal this turn, so. Anthony's game plan just not really related to what was going on on Brian's side of the table. Yeah, just go back to Brian and see if he does go for the equip, if he just has to take another turn from to set up. A lot of options here for Brian. Most of them end well. And he's going to go first for his own spell, Skite. Slaughter Pact tried on Vendillion Click. That will be dispelled. And the spell, Skite in play should give Brian the, the insurance he needs from his perspective to go for the kill this turn. 
Right, and then he's going to go ahead and equip and swing, and that will be lethal. Brian Brondewin, 2-0, two, two defeats Anthony Lowry. And, you know, for, for that matchup there, uh, Anthony definitely with some tools, but just pretty slow, pretty cumbersome, and his game plans are, involve a lot of moving parts or 